Infrared lasers and designators are one of the more expensive, unexpected costs of getting into night vision. You've already spent upwards of, say, $2,000 on even an entry-level night vision device, and then you've got to buy a laser and illuminator combo unit. The cheapest of which that is still viable in my opinion is the D-Ball i2 9007. You can get one of those for about $800, and they do, in my opinion, essentially the bare minimum of what you want an IR unit to do. As a side note, sometimes I'm going to call these LAMs laser aiming modules. That's not really the accepted term anymore, but you'll have to forgive me, I am a child of the 90s. That term stuck in my brain 30 years ago, and it's not coming out. Now, you can, in theory, get a multifunction device that is cheaper than a D-Ball i2-9007 or a similar Hollow Sun model. Case in point, the Streamlight TLR VIR2. This is an all-in-one unit that combines a visible illuminator, an LED-based IR illuminator, and an IR aiming laser. The VIR2 is very similar to a TLR1 weapon light, and it's mainly intended for use on pistols, similar to the Surefire X400 Vampire or the Zenitco Clash that's got the dual visible and IR modes. However, it's much smaller than an X400V, it's even smaller than a Streamlight TLR1, therefore it should fit in most pistol holsters that don't index specifically on the light. The VIR2 is activated via rocker switches just like the TLR1. You can also get a Streamlight remote switch kit, but I'm not really wild about any of Streamlight's tape switches. You can in theory mount the VIR2 in such a way that it works on a long gun. For example, I have my VIR2 mounted to the top rail of my AR9 pistol. I'm able to activate the momentary only side of the switch with my support hand thumb, very similar to the way that I would activate a top mounted tape switch. It's not ergonomically perfect, but it does work pretty well. If you were forced to mount one of these in the 3, 6, or 9 o'clock positions, it would get a little bit more complicated and you may in fact require the use of the remote switch kit. The VIR2 comes with two different 1913 rail keys, and unfortunately mine will not stay locked solidly in place with either of them on basically any rail that I've tried. Even tightened down as far as I can get it, it will slide back and forth just a little bit. That might be why mine won't stay zeroed. I mounted and adjusted it, shot a few rounds, and then set it in the back of my truck. And 20 minutes later when I picked it up, the zero had shifted right about 6 inches at 25 yards. Sick. Another potential downside of the VIR2 is that the IR mode always has both IR emitters on. There's a switch on the unit that controls the modes, the visible mode has visible light only, and the IR mode always has the illuminator and the designator on at the same time. The visible illuminator on the VIR2 is significantly weaker than that on the TLR1, despite it being about the same design. The VIR2 is powered by a single CR123 battery as opposed to two on the TLR1. Current models of the TLR1 HL produce 1,000 lumens of white light. The VIR2 is something like 350. It's noticeably weaker, but it's still serviceable, particularly on a pistol. The laser itself is decently effective. It seems to be about equivalent to a hollow sun or D-ball civilian legal laser on low mode. The illuminator, though, is extremely weak. It's weaker than a D-Ball's laser-based illuminator, Hollow Sun's low-power laser-based illuminator, and Surefire's dual vampire heads, like on the X400V or the M300V Scout Light. Why is that? Well, the IR LED illuminator is not restricted to the same low power as the laser-based illuminator on the D-Ball and the Hollow Sun. That's why the laser-based illuminators on a D-Ball i2-9007 are so weak but a D-Ball D2 with an LED illuminator is civilian legal and yet extremely powerful. So an LED-based illuminator can be very potent, but in the VAR2 it's not centered in the reflector lens, which could be contributing to how weak and unfocused it is. The illuminator LED is mounted slightly below the visible LED, and the designator is slightly offset to the side. The device is also pretty small. The LED IR emitter on the Surefire Vampire heads, those all have much longer reflectors and a centered LED that takes full advantage of all those mirrored surfaces. So when we compare these devices side by side, you can see that the flood effect of the VIR2 is extreme. It casts almost 180 degrees of spill. The Surefire Vampire heads, such as the K2ME in this video, already have so much flood that it causes some problems of their own. They light up the ground at your feet, they light up any foliage or obstacles to your sides. This reflects back on you, which is bad. It may cause your tube to autogate, which makes it harder to see the thing far away that you're specifically attempting to illuminate. It also reflects badly off of smoke or moisture in the air. Laser-based illuminators are significantly more focused. I think that should be pretty obvious from looking at this footage. The illuminator on the VAR2 is so dim and so wide that it doesn't even have a noticeable pattern when you're behind it. 
So for all these reasons, the VAR2 is best left on a pistol. Hopefully, you're able to lock it securely in place, and hopefully it holds zero. Those are other issues to worry about. I don't think they affect all units. It could just be an issue with my specific device, or the rails that I'm specifically trying to mount it on. Civilian legal laser-based illuminators like that on the D-Ball i2-9007 or the Holosun units that I've tested are already fairly weak. You really can't expect to meaningfully illuminate something that's further than 100 yards away. With the Streamlight VIR2, you're barely illuminating something 25 yards away. However, the infrared laser designator does still work fairly effectively at close range. So I think you could do worse than a VIR2 mounted to a pistol caliber carbine or other subgun. To my knowledge, this is the absolute cheapest unit that combines an illuminator and a designator into one package. It's significantly cheaper than a Surefire X400V, and it's also quite a bit smaller and lighter. For my money, active night vision shooting with a handgun is not all that important anyway. If you've got a night vision capable red dot, it works plenty fine at the distances you're likely to shoot your handgun at with night vision on. So I would rather have a powerful white light illuminator on my handgun for use without night vision, and a red dot for use with night vision. For an AR or any other type of intermediate or full power rifle, I would not consider the VAR2 at all. And for a pistol caliber carbine or other subgun, it's kind of a borderline case. Anyway, let me know if you have any questions. If you would like to support this channel and receive virtually nothing in return, you can check out my Subscribestar linked in the video description. You'll get early access to some videos and some bonus stuff, but really it's not so much that you should feel like you have to donate unless it's just out of the goodness of your own heart. There's also a Discord server. If you'd like to ask me questions in a Discord format as opposed to a YouTube format, that's fine too. Maybe you've got performance anxiety or you're afraid of being ridiculed in public. I don't really know. Anyway, see you next time.